How much water do you drink per day? If I said to you, I think you might be drinking too much, conversely, you might be drinking not enough, could you argue? Do you know the science behind how much water you should be drinking per day? If you have any doubts whatsoever about how much water you should be ingesting on a daily basis, you're gonna enjoy this video. Hey team, it's Mike here at After 40 Fitness and after40fitness.ca. Great question came in this week on a comment on another video. This one's from Chrissy. You'll notice here, I would love your opinion on research regarding water consumption. I know Dr. Barry says the gallon a day is false uh, and that might make sense for most, but most people in the fitness community and those who've lost a lot of weight try to drink a ton of water per day. Is it helpful? Is it harmful? Does it flush anything? Enjoy your videos. Thanks. Uh, listen, I appreciate that, Chrissy. Thank you. And a great question. And it does come up a lot, especially in the fitness community. You'll hear a lot of myths, dogma, just absolute conjecture about how much water you should drink. So I thought I would do exactly that and have a look at the, the research, at the science behind water consumption and try to come up with an answer to how much is enough or how much is too much. Hey, listen, if this is your first time to my channel, or if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Hit that bell icon, hit the all, the all for notifications. I'm putting out two or three videos a week right now and you'll know you'll know by the title if it's of interest to you. By the way, comments like this one, like Chrissy's, turn into videos just like this one. So if you see something or if you have a question that, that raises a concern for you, please do put a comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to turn the best questions into videos like this one. So on this note, let's talk about the science behind water. And I'm gonna start you off with a little bit of background. We're gonna look at Dr. Berg's comments, Dr. Barry's comments, Thomas DeLauer's comments, and then I'm gonna introduce you to the latest research on science. Are you ready? Let's get after it. There are several lines of thinking or lines of reasoning on how much water you and I should ingest on a daily basis, just as a baseline, okay? And so, for example, this one here from McGill University up here in Canada, the water myth was the title of this article and it said it is a common belief that you have to drink six to eight glasses of water per day. But this myth comes from a misunderstanding of basic physiology. So six to eight, by the way, when they refer to glasses, they're talking about eight ounce glasses. If you look at the ounces in a glass, you're gonna see that the normal standard is eight ounces. So this, this depicts somewhere between 48 and 64 ounces per day. And McGill is going on record as saying that is a myth. There's a, another rule and notice here, this one is from WebMD even endorses this one, that in general, you should try to drink between half an ounce and an ounce for each pound you weigh. In other words, if you weigh 150 pounds, that would be between 75 and 150 ounces per day. Or if you're like me, a male, let's say for example, I'm 190-ish, let's call that 85 to up to 190 ounces per day. First of all, it's a huge, huge range. Uh, and so WebMD goes so far as to say if, you, if you're working out or if it's humid or if it's hot and you know those kind of things, that would make a difference. But as a baseline, half an ounce per pound of body weight is the recommendation. I went searching. I spent a couple of days trying to find the source of this rule. And you know something? Completely zero science. You cannot go online and do any kind of a scholarly search for science behind this conjecture, for lack of a better word, of somewhere between... Eight, eight eighths, right? Eight glasses of eight ounces each and this half an ounce. So let's, let's be fair. If a woman, for example, weighs 130 pounds, then she's bang on. It doesn't matter which rule she uses, whether it's eight eighths at 64 or half her weight, which is 65 ounces per day. If she weighs 150, that, that works fine for a 130 pound person. Okay, but beyond that, my God, where, where do you go? Where does this, what does the science say? I know you were taught that you need to drink eight glasses of water a day. I was taught that. Everyone knows that. That's what they say you need to do. Well, someday I'm going to find out who they is. Well, that is what they say, right? We're all starting off with a minimum understanding of at least eight eight. So 64 ounces, I think I'm, that's pretty safe to say, right? So if, if it isn't scientific, if no science supports eight glasses of eight ounces each, where did that come from? You know something? Dr. Barry had a thought on that. Back in the 1940s, before there was an FDA or a USDA, a governmental panel said, hey, let's study human diets and see how much water people ingest. And they also studied, studied other things too, like how many carbs, how much protein. But they came up with an answer and they said, you know, the average person in America ingests about eight glasses of water a day, but they weren't talking about drinking it. They were talking about everything you drank and everything you ate as well. OK, it, they, there was there was ne there's never been a recommendation from any authoritative body that you should drink so many glasses of water a day. It just kind of became a myth. 
Okay, all right. So there's no science that really supports an amount, right? No scientific literature supports how much water you and I should drink, but there are guidelines, right? So the eight eights, the half of a, a, an ounce. So let's look at it this way. If, if there are guidelines in place, is there a downside? Is there a downside to drinking too much water? What do you think? The people that drink the most water actually are the most dehydrated. Now, how can that be? Because the, the difference in electrolytes, there's a condition called hyponatremia, and that is a condition where you can die of and it's drinking too much water because it's going to flush out all the electrolytes and the cells are going to swell because they have no electrolytes to mobilize the fluid. Even your brain will swell. You can even have a coma, a heart attack, uh, enlarged liver, okay? seizures. So all these things can come by drinking so much water. I mean, seriously, is that true? Is the body, according to Dr. Berg, so silly that it would actually cause detriment to our system? What does TD have to say on this? We have too much water. The process is really simple in terms of how we become diluted. Our kidneys regulate that electrolyte function. Okay, And if you're taking in more water than your kidneys can process at a certain point in time, your kidneys are just going to dump all the electrolytes. Okay, all right, so you can overdo the water. Isn't that interesting? You can drink too much. It's pretty much universal. The, the, the science is clear that there will be an electrolyte shortage or electrolyte deficiency if you exceed a threshold of water. But let's face it, that threshold, according to everything I could find on the topic, was very individual. Very individual on a sedentary basis, plus then as it incrementally increases, if you incrementally increases, work with me, uh, if you exercise, if it's hot out, et cetera, et cetera. But as a baseline, what seems to be a good metric that you and I can use. I found a really good article from Harvard. So Harvard here, I'll put this up. It's in their journal and it, the, the title was How Much Water Should You Drink? And of course it starts with drink plenty. Well, thanks for plenty, but what does that numerically mean? Can you quantitatively put a number on that? So what they did was after going through, look at the benefits of drinking water. Water does all these good things, aids in digestion, prevents constipation, body temperature, protects our organs and tissues. Okay, it then went on to say, notice the daily four to six cup rule is for generally healthy people. Four to six cups. So again, somewhere between 32 and six, six eighths is 48. So 32 to 48 ounces per day is what's considered to be the standard for normal people who are healthy. Uh, how much water should you drink? Notice a couple paragraphs down. A healthy person's water need will vary, especially if you're losing water through sweat because you're exercising or because it's a hot day. So again, we're still in the 40 to 60 ounces per day range, not the 100 ounces, not the gallon per day that I see in social media. It seems ridiculous. We're going to finish by looking at brand new science. When I say brand new, this is December of 2018. So this is the latest research on water. It was in the journal Nutrients. And the title you'll notice is Water Intake, Water Balance, and the Elusive, Elusive, what a great word, Daily Water Requirement. So what they did is after giving a blurb about the lack of science that supports a true metric that any one of us can use. And it went through all the, this actually really good article. Please look this up. Uh, you'll learn a lot about all the research that's gone into water and how no one's been able to come up with a quantifiable amount of water as a guideline. There's just too many variables per person. So even what I'm trying to do in this video today is just establish that by and large, we overdo it. We overdo it. We really do. Uh, because we're aiming for this half an ounce per pound at a minimum. Uh, and then the people on social media, if you're one of these people who drinks a gallon per day, there is no science that supports it. You just need to know that. You don't need to drink that much based on what I'm showing you. If you want to, God bless, just make sure you double or triple your electrolyte amount per day. Right? That was a clear understanding from Dr. Barry, Dr. Berg, and Thomas DeLauer, was that we need to make sure we're compensating for the flushing of electrolytes when we get beyond a certain amount, which appears to be somewhere in the 50 to 60 range based on the science I've shown you so far. However, this study takes it to another level. Oh my goodness, this study was so good. Individuals with a normal POSM, this is osmology of, of blood, right? The thickness or the thinness of our blood based on our, the water quantity in our body. This may be considered to be normally hydrated with, without regard for total water intake, TWI. So what they're looking for is, regardless of total water intake, what does the body do to maintain or to control our homeostatic viscosity of our blood flow? It also mentions urinary, urinary biomarkers. And then notice because the brain actively regulates both total body water and blood concentration within this normal osmology range. Uh, across And notice across a wide range of total water intake. 
this figure variables that are regulated as part of water, body water homeostasis. These are the things that they could test for. So as we took in water, they could look at these electrolyte variables, total water, intracellular, extracellular, blood pressure, plasma volume, and looked at these rather than any other just conjecture and, and guesswork, right? Let's look at how the body reacts in these five ways to control our viscosity. Uh, and by the way, total water intake, you need to know this, in this study was defined as all water sources. So it was water you drank, it was expressly water they drank, it was coffees and teas and sodas and beverages, and it was the moisture content of their food. Right? Make no mistake, when we talk about total water intake, all of that matters. All of that is included. So people who say that I drink a gallon a day, which is 120 some odd hundreds, 128 ounces in a gallon, right? that's just in the water they drink. They may also have a coffee or tea, they may also have uh, cruciferous vegetables that are high, you know, a salad, high water content, that they don't even count that's over and above on top of what they actually drink in a day. So again, this study was so good because they looked at this brain set point between deficit and excess. They looked at things like TWI, total body water. They looked at plasma, osmolality, uh, sodium concentration, plasma, and thirst. And they looked at all these things as an indication of how much water they should have. Really did a great job of trying to determine what the, that set point would be where the body began to compensate for a lack of hydration. Notice no empirical research provides definitive answers and no universal consensus exists. Exactly what Dr. Berg and Dr. Barry said, that there's no empirical research that dictates how much water you and I should drink. However, this approach involved the assessment of the intensity of neuroendocrine responses during euhydration and following experimental perturbations. So euhydration is perfect hydration levels. So once they had this baseline of where they were perfectly hydrated, now let's mess it up. Now let's give them too much water and not enough and see how the brain, this set point, reacts. Oh, it's cool science. Notice we focus on plasma AVP, which again is that osmolality or the um, viscosity of plasma blood to see how the brain responded to, to hydration, as it says, hydration biomarkers to determine the intensity of neuroendocrine responses to a range of total water intake. And the plasma AVP concentrations greater than two PG per milliliter represents a baseline euhydrated state, so perfect. Brain is not attempting to conserve water, whereas above two, greater than or above two, indicates dehydration or hypohydration, right? Same thing, dehydration and hypohydration are the same thing because the brain is acting now to conserve water. I mean, now we're getting into the nitty gritty of the science. Our examination of data from multiple research studies demonstrates that plasma AVP concentrations of two is equivalent to total water intake of 1.8 liter in a 24 hour period. So you hydration, so this perfect state of perfect hydration happened at less than two liters a day. So two liters, remember, one, uh, 33 ounces per liter. So less than two ounces a day is less than 66 ounces per day. All right, there you have it, there's the science. In these 120 women, college age women, uh, uh, less than two liters, less than 66 ounces per day. Now, this, the study will go on to say if they are going to work out, if there is going to be uh, excessive heat, alter it. But in a, in a clinical environment, these 120 women where they went about their day but didn't exercise and weren't uh, exposed to excessive heat, so sweat wasn't an issue, 60 ounces was all it took for them to maintain perfect hydration. The other topic I just want to talk about to conclude is thirst. Can you count on thirst to be an indicator of when you are thirsty, when you're starting to fall out of that you hydration phase on the downside. Uh, and so you may occasionally in social media hear people say, no, no, by the time you're thirsty, it's too late, you're already dehydrated. That doesn't seem to make sense. Is our body really so stupid? I thought I'd ch check first with Dr. Barry and see what he had to say on this. The liquids in tea counts. The liquid in your food counts. Your body doesn't need your conscious input. It doesn't need your help. It's much smarter than you, and it's also much smarter than the average doctor, okay? So when your body needs liquids, it's going to let you know. I would have thought so, too. I don't know about you, but I trust my thirst. When, I, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and it seems to, be, to work to suit me just fine. So I'm thinking if Dr. Barry's correct and our body is as smart as it is, it'll indicate, right? We know when we're hungry, we need to eat. We know when we're thirsty, we should drink. We tell everybody in social media, I don't know about you, but I constantly tell people to listen to their body. And yet all of a sudden now we're gonna turn around and say when it comes to thirst, don't listen to your body. Seems kind of dumb to me. Uh, just as a takeaway, if you're like me and you're over 50, make sure you stay hydrated, aim for that 50 to 60 ounce per day range and add more if exercising, if taking medications that, that cause water retention or water loss. And definitely if you're in the heat. 
And I thought it was really interesting. I'm just going to finish with how much Dr. Berg drinks. Uh, I would have thought that Dr. Berg would have been one of those 100 ounce per day guys. Notice what he says here? Well, I um, probably drink on a given day maybe two, maybe three cups of water a day. That's what I drink. Your body adjusts. If you drink less, you'll pee less. If you drink more, you'll pee more. Your body's always trying to maintain natural balance. There you have it. it. Sounds like 30, maybe 40 ounces for Dr. Berg. But remember, Dr. Berg is also a seven cup a day vegetable eater. Right? He's very big in his cruciferous. So obviously, while he's only expressly drinking, let's call it 30 or 40 ounces a day, he definitely makes up for it in the moisture in the food he eats. So as a takeaway, guys, to finish off the video, uh, drink as much as you want. I think 50 definitely is a good minimum based on this research. It seems to be the 50 to 60 range. Uh, make sure as well on top of that that you're augmenting your electrolytes. If you are going to exceed 60 grams per day, you must start up in your, and by the way, I, I'll say that loosely, up your electrolytes, magnesium, sodium is a big one, and your potassium. Uh, I'm not a doctor by any means, so check with your doctor if you're going to exceed more than a gram of each. And here I'm gonna give you an indication. If you cramp in any way, shape, or form, if you have muscle cramps of any kind, you are drinking too much water and flushing electrolytes or you're not taking enough. So when people talk to me, when my clients say to me, hey, I'm cramping, my number one, two questions, I shouldn't say number one, my two questions are, how much water are you drinking right now? And chances are they're gonna be up shooting for the 90, 100, 110 ounces per day. And I say, cut back on your water, you're flushing your electrolytes. But second, whatever you're taking for electrolytes, double it for a day or two. Double it, your body will expel what's over and above. So if you're taking a gram, take two. By the way, the RDA, just so you know, is somewhere between four and five grams a day for potassium. So augmenting by a gram or two, God bless you. You're gonna do nothing but benefits. There's no downside. So when people on social media talk about cramping, you know what the number one response is? I see it every day. Drink more water. Stupid. Don't drink more water. Drink less and up your, and up your electrolytes. Right. I hope that made sense. I hope you got some good information out of that. So again, as a, as a takeaway, I think 60 ounces is the U hydration point for every one of us. And of course, add, add a glass of water if you work out, add another glass if you are in the heat, add another glass if you're on meds that may either cause bloating and excessive water retention and or excessive water release or excretion, right? But if we start with 60 and we go to 70 or 80, depending on these other variables, I think you'll do yourself well, you'll stay hydrated, you'll get all the benefits and God bless you in your journey. I'll see you in the next one.